Before long, another ship came into view. Captain Tremble clapped his hands excitedly. Mr. Mate, he ordered, hoist the jolly and reassuring Roger. This time, at the sight of the pirate flag, the other ship hove to straight away. Captain Tremble smiled. This is all going swimmingly, isn't it? He said. Mr. Mate, Mr. Cheeseboard and R. Tom Lad, you come with me and let's board this ship. Um, will four of us be enough? Tom asked. It'll have to be, the captain said cheerily. We've only got four life jackets and no crewman of mine is stepping from one ship onto another without taking the appropriate safety measures. Tom groaned quietly to himself. He had a feeling this was not going to go well. Mr. Cheeseboard, the captain murmured as they prepared to board. What's that thing pirates say instead of hello? Easy opened the big book of piratey stuff and flicked hurriedly through the pages. Ah, he said, that'd be ahoy there, matey. The captain nodded and led his boarding party across to the other ship. Ahoy there, matey, he said to the other captain. We're pirates. How much treasure do you have on board? We haven't got any, said the other captain. Oh, said Captain Tremble. I don't suppose you've got any cake, do you? We did have, said the other captain, but we've just finished it. Oh, said Captain Tremble again. Well, in that case, sorry to have bothered you. And he led the boarding party back to careful now and let the other ship go. Don't look so glum, our Tom lad, he said as they watched it leave. Can't expect everything to go right first time. We'll try again when another ship comes along. The jolly and reassuring Roger worked just as well in getting the next ship, the Seagull, to heave to. And again, the boarding party boarded successfully. Ahoy there, matey! Captain Tremble said. We're pirates. How much treasure do you have on board? Oh, lots, said the Seagull's captain. Excellent, said Captain Tremble. Can we have it, please? No, said the Seagull's captain. Oh, said Captain Tremble. Well, in that case, could we have some cake? You can if you want, said the captain of the Seagull, but it's all full of weevils. Ah, said Captain Tremble. In that case, I think we'll give it a miss. Have a nice day. And they left. Uh, Captain, Tom said, as they returned to the careful now, I don't think anyone's going to give us their treasure if we just ask them nicely. Really? Captain Tremble said. But if we don't ask them nicely, how on earth will they know what we want? Well, Tom said hesitantly, I think rather than asking for treasure, you're supposed to order them to hand it over. And if they don't, you're supposed to fight them. Captain Tremble's mouth fell open with shock. Ah, oh, Tom lad, he said. It shouldn't take a risk assessment to tell you that fighting is not terribly safe. Or healthy, put in the first mate. Mr. Mink, said the captain crossly. I think you'll find that getting hurt in a fight is definitely a safety issue. The first mate thought about this. But if you're fighting someone who's got a nasty disease, he said, and they breathe all over you while you're fighting, you might come down with whatever they've got, and that ain't very healthy. The captain gave him a hard stare. The point is, he said firmly, that we are not ordinary pirates. We are health and safety pirates, and we don't fight people. We shall ask the captain of the next ship for treasure. We shall ask him very nicely, and he will give us his treasure, because the big book of piratey stuff says you're supposed to give treasure to pirates. And I don't want to hear another word about it, he added, as Tom opened his mouth to protest. The third ship they boarded was called the Northern Star. Ahoy there, matey, Captain Tremble began, with the air of someone who was getting a bit tired of asking the same question over and over. We're pirates. How much treasure do you have on board? Treasure? 
replied the Northern Star's captain. Oh, bucketfuls. Absolutely loads. Too much, really. It's getting rather in the way downstairs. We can hardly move for the stuff. Wonderful, Captain Tremble said, perking up a bit. Can we have it, please? The Northern Star's captain looked a bit doubtful. What? All of it, he said. Are you sure you'll have room? Captain Tremble couldn't have looked more pleased. Oh, I'm sure we'll find somewhere to put it, he said. Well, it would be awfully kind of you, the Northern Star's captain said, if you're sure you don't mind. Not at all, said Captain Tremble, rubbing his hands together happily. We'll just go and get it, shall we? Oh, it'll be too much for you four to carry, said the captain of the Northern Star. Why don't you go back to your ship and have a cup of tea and I'll have it delivered? How kind, Captain Tremble said, leading the boarding party back to the ship. Come on, everybody, he announced to the assembled crew. Let's all go, go below decks and have a cup of tea while we wait for the treasure to be delivered. There was a great cheer from the pirates and they all followed the captain below. Tom was not so sure. Captain, he said, didn't you think it was a bit funny the way the Northern Star's crew kept sniggering behind their hands when you were talking to their captain? Sniggering, said Captain Tremble airily. They weren't sniggering behind their hands, our Tom lad. They were sneezing. Obviously didn't want to spread their germs around because that wouldn't be very healthy. Or safe, put in the first mate. The captain rolled his eyes. Mr. Mate, giving someone a cold by sneezing on them is a health issue. The first mate thought about this. But if you sneezes and a great big bogey comes out and lands on the floor, someone might slip on it and break their leg and that ain't very safe. Captain Tremble sighed. Anyway, he said, the point is that the crew of the Northern Star were not sniggering. They were delighted to see us. They've obviously been sailing around looking for some pirates to give their treasure to. Tom wasn't so sure, especially when, half an hour later, they all emerged onto the deck to find the Northern Star gone and no sign of any treasure anywhere. Although they did find a little card that said, Sorry you weren't in when we called. If you would like to arrange a new time for delivery, please send a message to our head office. But, spluttered Captain Tremble, but we were here all the time. And anyway, they could just have left it for us. It's not as if anyone's going to steal it. It was the fourth ship that really finished things off, though. As soon as the health and safety pirates raised the jolly and reassuring Roger, it opened up its cannon ports and started firing at them. Only some quick thinking and even quicker shouting on Camaria's part saved them from a watery grave. I say, Captain Tremble said in shock as they fled, that wasn't very safe. Or healthy, put in the first mate. The captain glared at him. Mr. Mate, he said, I think you'll find that being shot at with great big cannons that could smash your ship to bits is a safety issue. The first mate thought about this. But if they smash your ship, ship to bits, you might get a splinter. And my mum says splinters can travel up through your blood and into your heart. And that ain't very healthy, he said. It was a despondent crew that gathered that evening on the deck. Captain Tremble suggested some music might cheer them up. The risk assessment on the accordion had at last been completed, and it had been decided that as long as certain precautions were taken, it was safe for the instrument to be played. However, since those precautions included the wearing of extremely thick safety gloves by whoever was playing it, the accordion really didn't sound very good. What are we going to do? Captain Tramble moaned for the 36th time. People won't give us their treasure, even though you're supposed to give treasure to pirates. We can't go back to our nice safe harbour in case bad Beatrice goes back there too. And we don't have any cake. The mention of cake 
reminded Tom that he still had a bit left, all wrapped up neatly in his pocket. But as he reached for it, his hand touched something else that was in there, something rough and hairy. Wondering what it was, he drew it out and looked at it. It was one of Bad Beatrice's fake sideburns. Idly, he turned it over and froze in astonishment. There was something on the other side. It looked like a map. <laughs>